Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2006 Chevy Express with a 6.0 liter. The customer complaint is that the check engine light is on. He says the van drives fine, there is no drivability concerns, he didn't notice anything, but only the check engine light remains on when the car is running. So, let's go inside the car, scan it for some trouble codes, so we can find out what's causing this check engine light to remain on. So let's go inside the car and scan it for some trouble codes. All right guys, so I'm inside the car right now. Before I connect the scan tool to the car, let's confirm the customer's complaint first. So I'm gonna start the car and show you the check engine light. So see right there, as you guys can see, the check engine light remained on. The van is running, but the check engine light is on. So, customer complaint confirmed. So now let's connect the scan tool. I got the scan tool connected to the car, but I have realized that when I turn the key on, there is a buzzer that's going on all the time. And I can't find a button or anything that can disable it. It's really annoying, but when I start the engine, the buzzer goes off. So we're gonna scan it with the engine running. So with the key on, the buzzer, as you guys can hear, but once I start it, the buzzer goes off. I apologize for this noise, guys. Um, yeah, there goes the buzzer. So it's the buzzer is off, and I mean, ideally, it's not good scanning a car for trouble codes while it's running, but I mean, it's still doable as long as it allows us to communicate so it's not gonna cause anything so it's a chevy it's a 2006 let's auto id it so the scan tool just identified the car and let's go to the engine control module this one's got a throttle cable and let's go to codes menu display codes let's hit history codes so we have three codes in memory p0053 bank one sensor one hero resistance range slash performance and then the other one is p0134 low o2 sensor activity bank one sensor one hmm, that's weird that other code just disappeared. Huh. That's weird. Well, so all these codes are actually caused by by one component, which is the O2 sensor, the first O2 sensor on bank one. Okay? So now that we know what kind of trouble codes we have, the next step I want to make is uh, backing out of here and looking at some live data so let's click on data display engine data and let's look at some sensor activity here so let's customize this this list we don't want to look at all these data pits so let's see engine speed I just I'm just interested in all two sensor data pits so O2 sensor bank one sensor one so let's get this one and the other one so this is a V8 and it has uh, two O2 sensors I'm um, well four uh, two on bank two and then two on bank one so there's one bank on the driver's side and another on the driver's side so let's graph these two and look at the difference between both of them. So, our the sensor that's flagging the code is this one right here, the bank one sensor one. So let's look at the difference between this and this one. I mean, I, I already kind of see the inconsistency here because both sensors should mirror each other. Okay, they are pretty much it's pretty much the same sensor, but that's on the uh, they are just opposite from each other. This one is on one bank and the other one is on the other, okay? 
they should technically mirror each other because whatever values that that one this one should have the same values should be on the other sensor so let's increase the engine speed here let's increase the rpm up to 3000 So this sensor here is inconsistent. I mean, I mean it's working. You might say, oh, I don't really see a big difference, but there is. Let's pause here again, see? I mean, it's, it's reading, but it's just slow. And these sensors can be weird sometimes. I mean, you might work these sensors. I mean, I've, I, I have revved it pretty hard. So, this might make it come back to life. I don't think this sensor here it should read this way. I mean, I... Uh, I'm trying to find a good capture here. Let's see. Yeah. So let's look at this for a second. Look at frame right here. Because when when I pause it, you see this cursor right here? This cursor actually reads the peak. So right here, frame 670 on bank one sensor two here is reading no 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 actually no i'm wrong uh, not this one actually we are looking at right here back here right here so when i pause it the value it's giving us this value right here is whatever that's this cursor right here is reading so this guy and look frame 719 and then 719 on this bank. Do you see the difference? This is reading way high, but this one is reading way down. So it's like, this is reading rich, and this side is reading lean. So this sensor here is being so slow, so it's not transitioning as fast as the other one is. So when the engine control module is looking at the, the, the info or the signal from this sensor, and then it compares it to this, that's why it's flagging that code saying that uh, this sensor has low activity. So it's not keeping up with the other one. Okay? So, I mean, our sensor is not being fast enough to uh, report to the engine control module. So, um, with this information, the next step I want to do is I'm going to turn the engine off and turn the key on and make sure that there is a bias voltage that the computer puts out because I know with this GM, with the key on engine off, the ECM puts out a 5 millimeter volt to test the circuit, okay? So once we confirm that, the next step is going to be going under the van, doing some tests at the sensor connector. So let's check this uh, bias voltage. Let's make sure the bias voltage is there because that's gonna help us uh, test the signal wire for the O2 sensor. But uh, looking at these readings here, it looks like we only have a faulty O2 sensor. This O2 sensor here is going bad. All right, so this is gonna be a quick one, guys. Let's go under the car and do some measurements actually no let's let's make sure there's that bias voltage first before we go under the car all right so i just turned the engine off and the key is on right now and as you guys can see engine off key on these sensor actually are reading some type of voltage here so this voltage is actually increasing slowly 
the one on bank two is reading 265 and the one on bank one is reading uh, 178 so this tells me that there's some type of bias voltage that the computer puts out to test the circuit okay so let's go under the car do some test if everything checks out okay we're gonna replace this O2 sensor so the test we're gonna do we're gonna check the ground we have to make sure our sensor is getting ground we are also gonna check the uh, here circuit I'm gonna use the scan tool to actually turn that on we have to make sure that the computer has been able to turn the here circuit on and we also gonna check this uh, sensor signal circuit so we have to check this bias voltage at the connector we have to make sure this voltage is making it to the O2 sensor connector so if everything checks out okay we're gonna go ahead and replace the sensor I believe that's gonna be the case here but we're not we're just not gonna throw a new sensor in it we have to go through the steps guys always check double check yourself even if it looks so easy but it doesn't hurt to take a couple more minutes to test everything before you replace the component so and as you guys can see this line is still going up it's actually gonna stop around 500 so this one here is gonna stop around 500 millivolts that's the bias voltage I was talking about so let's go under the car and do some checks at the O2 sensor connector alright guys so I'm under the car right now and the driver side is bank 1 and the passenger side is bank 2 so the sensor we're gonna be uh, testing is this sensor right here this is bank 1 sensor 1 so we're gonna be doing our tests at the connector here so I'm gonna give you guys a shot of the connector so I can tell you what I'm gonna test next but the sensor here is our faulty sensor so here is our sensor connector so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be back probing each wire on the sensor connector to see what kind of readings we're gonna get so before I back probe these wires I'm gonna disconnect the sensor first so I got the sensor disconnected from the uh, harness side there and the sensor actually the, the O2 sensor connector has got four wires there is a light blue wire a pink wire so those two are for the sensor here and then on the other side of the connector there is a I hope you guys can see this there's a purple wire with a white tracer and then a tan wire so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back probe hopefully you guys can see that so I'm gonna back probe these wires one at a time and see what kind of readings we're gonna get so this uh, pink wire should have power with the key on so key on engine off or engine running there should be battery voltage on this wire here so I'm gonna have you guys focus on the lab scope as I back probe these wires so what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna go I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here so I'm just gonna go after one wire so I'm gonna back probe one wire at a time okay and our issue is probably the sensor but it's always good to double check the wiring before you replace the component okay so this is technically an extra step I'm going it's not really necessary but I always like checking everything else before I replace the component just to be 100% sure so let me focus you guys on uh, on the lab scope while I back probe these wires let's go to a uh, scope multimeter and let's go to digital multimeter volts DC so now uh, let's start checking this uh, pink wire first so I have the key on if this wire is good we should have battery voltage there and as you guys can tell we are reading 12.18 volt on the pink wire so the pink wire is the power here and this wire is powered with the key on or while the engine is running so this wire is good 
So now the next step is I'm gonna back probe the blue wire. The blue wire, which actually is the uh, O2 here low circuit, so which is the here ground that's coming from the computer. So I have the key on right now, and you, as you guys can tell, we're reading 0.01 volt, so which is 100 millivolts, and this is good computer ground. So now the next step is going to be checking the purple wire. So the purple with the white tracer. And the purple wire with the white tracer is the O2 high signal. And this wire is also coming from the computer. So if this wire is good, so from the computer all the way to the O2 sensor connector, we should read around half a volt on this wire. So as you guys can see, we are reading 0.43 volts. So this is that bias voltage that the computer puts out to test this circuit, okay? And this tells me that the wiring is good from the computer up to the O2 sensor connector. So now the last wire, which is the 10 wire. So the 10 wire is the O2 sensor low reference, O2 sensor ground. This is also coming from the computer. And as you guys can tell, this, the 10 wire, the O2 sensor low signal, is reading 0.04 volt. I mean, it's also coming from the computer. So this is good, guys. This tells me that the wiring from the computer to the sensor is good. So now I can remove and replace this O2 sensor with 100% surety. So we don't have a wiring issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this O2 sensor. All right, so I ordered a new O2 sensor and it just came in. Here is a new sensor. So let's replace this O2 sensor and lower the car, connect the scan tool back up and see what the difference is gonna be with the new O2 sensor installed. So here is our new sensor installed. So now let's lower the van. Guys, we are back inside the van right now. So let's uh, start the van and scan it and look at some uh, live data and see if there will be a difference with the new sensor we just installed. Man, this buzzer is killing me. So let's customize this. Deselect all. We just want to look at all two sensor data pins. Engine speed. And as you guys can see, these numbers here are technically mirroring each other. And as you can tell, I just pause this. Look at bank one, bank one sensor one, we're reading 178 millivolt. And bank two sensor one, we are reading 156 millivolt. So this is what I was talking about, guys. So at the cursor here, uh, this value 
is not uh, far apart from this one. So they should technically be mirroring each other. And the computer look, looks at both values and compare them uh, with the set values that are in the ECM. But if one is way off from the other one, it flags the code. Okay, so, I mean, this is a fix, guys. Uh, remember before we had like 60 on the other one and the, the bank one, sensor one was reading zero, you know? So no more zeros anymore. It's no longer dropping, so we are focused on this one, guys. So watch, 169 and 122 here. So this is good, guys. This is a fix. So I feel comfortable erasing the code, test driving this vehicle. I believe the code is now gonna come back or I can just leave the light on and test drive it until it clears it itself, until the monitor runs again. So right there, another good capture right there. See, 790 millivolts and 825 millivolts. So really close to each other. But remember before, with, with the old sensor, the values were way off. So this one was way off from the one on the bank two. Okay? So, let's back out of here. And I'm gonna actually erase the codes. So I just erased the codes. Let's see if there's any codes here in memory. So no codes present. Let me start it. So let's go back to see, just in case. So the code didn't come back. Of course it's not gonna come back up. So. I'm gonna test drive the car and call the customer. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, K Diagnostics. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in a the comment box. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.